In 3.5, the important topics are the reciprocal function f of x equals 1 over x, the function f of x equals 1 over x squared, asymptotes, graphing techniques, and rational models. A function f of the form f of x equals p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are polynomials with q of x being non-zero, is a rational function. Some examples of rational functions are f of x equals 1 over x, f of x equals x plus 1 divided by 2x squared plus 5x minus 3, and f of x equals 3x squared minus 3x minus 6 over x squared plus 8x plus 16. Essentially, rational functions are ratios of two polynomials. Since any values of x such that q of x is equal to zero are excluded from the domain of a rational function, this type of function often has a discontinuous graph, that is, a graph that has one or more breaks in it. The simplest rational function with a variable denominator is the reciprocal function, or f of x equals 1 over x. The reciprocal function looks like this. It has a vertical asymptote in the middle here, as well as a horizontal asymptote. A good way to create the reciprocal function is to create a table here I picked the values negative 2, negative 1, negative 1 half, 0, 1 half, 1, and 2. And then we take the reciprocal of these values, so we get the reciprocal of 2 is negative 1 half, the reciprocal of negative 1 is still negative 1, the reciprocal of negative 1 over 2 is negative 2 over 1, or just negative 2, and the reciprocal of 0 is undefined because we cannot divide by 0. If you look, this function decreases as you go from negative infinity to zero, and then it starts also decreasing from zero to infinity. This graph is also an odd function uh, because it is symmetric about the origin here. It is an odd function because it's symmetric about the origin. Example 1, we want to graph y equals negative 2 over x and give the domain and largest open intervals of the domain which the function is increasing or decreasing. The expression negative 2 over x can be written as negative 2 times 1 over x or 2 times 1 over negative x, indicating the graph may be obtained by stretching the graph of y equals 1 over x vertically by a factor of 2 and reflecting it across either the x-axis or y-axis. The x and y-axis remain the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. The domain and range is still negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. Graph y equals negative two over x, give the domain and the largest open intervals of which the function is increasing or decreasing. To do this problem, I'm going to make a table. So I'm going to pick x, and then we'll take the reciprocal of x, and finally, at the end, we'll multiply it by negative 2. So let's pick some values for x. We'll say negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And we'll take the reciprocal of these values in the next column. The reciprocal of 2 is negative 1 half. The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. The reciprocal of 0 is undefined, since you cannot divide by 0. Reciprocal of 1 is 1, and the reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. So we have the reciprocal function here. Now all I need to do to get to this step is to multiply this column by negative 2. Negative 2 times 1 half is positive 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. If you multiply a number that's undefined by a negative 2, it's still undefined. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. And 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1. So you can see here we're going to get a graph like this on the right, 
it is going to be increasing now from negative infinity to infinity. There are vertical asymptotes still, and there are still horizontal asymptotes. The graph increases from negative infinity to zero, and it increases from zero to infinity. Example two, we want to graph f of x equals two over x plus one. Give the domain and the largest open intervals of the domain for which the function is increasing or decreasing. The expression two over x plus one can be written as two times one over x plus one by factoring out the two into the front, indicating that the graph may be obtained by shifting the graph of y equals one over x to the left one unit and stretching it vertically by a factor of two. Notice that the one is on the inside, so it's gonna force our graph to go left one. And here is our graph. It is shifted one unit to the left and it is stretched. The horizontal shifts affect the domain, which is now negative infinity to negative one, union negative one to infinity. The line x equals negative one is the vertical asymptote, and the line y equals zero, the x-axis, remains the horizontal asymptote. The range is still negative infinity to infinity. The range is still negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. The graph shows that f of x is decreasing on both sides of its vertical asymptote. Thus, it is decreasing from negative infinity to negative one and on negative one to infinity. Let's look at the rational function f of x equals one over x squared. If you notice on the graph, you have these positive values here on either side of the tail. The reason for that is there's a squared on the bottom. This squared term is gonna cause all of their values to be positive. So there is no part of the graph that goes below the x-axis. And as a consequence, if we plug in positive or negative values, we're still going to get the same number out because of that squared on the bottom. So on this table, I have the values plus or minus 3, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1 half, plus or minus 1 fourth. And when we plug it into the function, we get this as an output for the function. There is a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. There's a vertical asymptote at x equals zero and a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. F of x equals one over x squared increases on the interval from negative infinity to zero and it decreases on the interval from zero to infinity. Example three, let's graph g of x equals one over x plus two quantity squared minus one. We want to give the domain and the largest open intervals of the domain for which the function is increasing or decreasing. If you look at the function g of x, it looks like there's a substitution of x plus two into the function one over x squared. The function is equivalent to g of x equals f of x plus 2. Again, there appears to be an x plus 2 that's substituted into our 1 over x squared function. g of x is equal to f of x plus 2 minus 1, where f of x equals 1 over x squared. This indicates the graph will be shifted to the left two units and one unit down because the h is on the inside, the h is negative 2, and the k is on the outside, negative one. So it's gonna be shifted to the left two units and down one unit, and we still have those horizontal and vertical asymptotes. This time the vertical asymptote is at x equals negative two, and the horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative one. The horizontal shifts affect the domain now from negative infinity to negative two, union negative two to infinity, while the vertical shifts affect the range now, and it is from negative one to infinity. 
the vertical asymptote has equation x equals negative 2, and the horizontal asymptote has equation y equals negative 1. This function is increasing on negative infinity to negative 2 and decreasing on negative 2 to infinity. Let p of x and q of x define polynomials. Consider the rational function f of x equals p of x divided by q of x written in those terms and real numbers a and b. If f of x approaches infinity as x goes to a, then the line x equals a is a vertical asymptote. If f of x approaches b as the absolute value approaches infinity, then the line y equals b is a horizontal asymptote. To find the asymptotes of a rational function defined by a rational expression in lowest terms, use the following procedures. Number one, vertical asymptotes. Find any vertical asymptotes by setting the denominator equal to zero and solving for x. If a is a zero of the denominator, then the line x equals a is a vertical asymptote. Two, other asymptotes. Determine any other asymptotes by considering three possibilities. A. If the numerator has lesser degree than the denominator, then there is a horizontal asymptote y equals 0, or the x-axis. Again, if the numerator is lesser degree than the denominator, there is a horizontal asymptote y equals 0. B. If the numerator and denominator have the same degree, and the function is of the form f of x equals, and here we have a list of terms with the same degree divided by a list of terms with the same degree, where the leading terms are non-zero, then the horizontal asymptote has the equation y equals a sub n divided by b sub n, which is the coefficients of the leading term of the numerator and denominator. And this only happens if the numerator and denominator have the same degree. So if they have the same degree, we know the horizontal asymptote has the equation y equals a sub n divided by b sub n, the ratio of the leading coefficients. C. If the numerator is of degree exactly one more than the denominator, then there will be an oblique or slanted asymptote. To find it, divide the numerator by the denominator and disregard the remainder. Set the rest of the quotient equal to y to obtain the equation of the asymptote. I want you to note the graph of a rational function may have more than one vertical asymptote or it may have none at all. The graph cannot intersect any vertical asymptotes. There can be at most one other non-vertical asymptote and the graph may intersect that asymptote as well. There can be at most one other non-vertical asymptote and the graph may intersect that asymptote as we shall see in example seven. Example four, give the equations of any vertical, horizontal, or oblique asymptotes for the graph of each rational function. f of x equals x plus one divided by two x minus one times x plus three. To find the vertical asymptotes, set the denominator equal to zero and solve. So we'll set 2x minus 1 times x plus 3 equal to zero, and we can set each of these factors equal to zero. We'll add 1 to both sides for the first equation, and 2x is equal to 1. I could divide both sides by 2 and get x equals 1 half. For the second one, we'll subtract both sides by 3. And x equals negative 3. So we have two vertical asymptotes now. We have x equals 1 half and x equals negative 3. The equations of the vertical asymptotes are x equals 1 half and x equals negative 3. To find the equation of the horizontal asymptote, Divide each term by the greatest power of x in the expression. First, multiply the factors in the denominator. Here we have f of x equals x plus 1 divided by 2x minus 1 times x plus 3 
and I could FOIL this expression out and I will get in the denominator 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. Now divide each term in the numerator and denominator by x squared since 2 is the greatest power of x. Here we have x plus 1 is divided by x squared for each of the terms and on the denominator we have 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 and each of those terms are also divided by x squared. Notice that x cancels out with 1x on the bottom and here the x squareds cancel out. The x cancels out with just 1x down here with the x squared and now we have it reduces to 1 over x plus 1 over x squared all over 2 plus 5 over x minus 3 over x squared. Now if I let x go to infinity, if I let x approach a really really large number, these values up here get really really big on the bottom and if I divide a small number by a really huge number, this part of the expression approaches zero. Same thing here, 1 over x squared as x goes to infinity, this approaches zero. And 5 over x approaches 0, so anything with an x in the denominator is going to approach 0. So we have this is equivalent to 0 divided by 2, and that is just 0. So as we go to infinity, these numbers approach 0, and we have 0 divided by 2, which goes to 0. So we do have a y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote. You could also look at the degree of the polynomial. Notice in the denominator, the degree is higher than in the numerator. So we know as x gets really, really large, the bottom gets bigger faster than the numerator. Since this gets bigger much faster, we're dividing a small number by a bigger number. So this actually approaches 0. And that's why we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. For each rational function, find all asymptotes. Here we have f of x equals 2x plus 1 divided by x minus 3. I'm going to start by setting the denominator equal to 0. So x equals 3 is a vertical asymptote. x equals 3 is a vertical asymptote. To find our horizontal asymptote, so we're going to divide each of the terms by x. f of x is equal to, I'm going to take 2x plus 1 and x minus 3 and with each of those we're going to divide it by x. We're going to divide 2x by x, 1 by x, x divided by x, and negative 3 divided by x. Now let's see what cancels out. The x over x here cancels out. The x over x here also cancels out. And notice that we have left now this simplifies to f of x is equal to 2 plus 1 over x divided by 1 minus 3 over x. Now think about x approaching infinity. 1 over x would approach 0 and 3 over x would approach 0. So our function f of x is approaching 2 over 1 or just 2. And so our horizontal asymptote is y equals 2. y equals 2 is our horizontal asymptote. Part C, we have f of x equals x squared plus 1 divided by x minus 2. I am going to look for our vertical asymptotes first, so we'll set the denominator equal to 0. So we can solve this, and x is just equal to 2. That's our vertical asymptote. To find our horizontal asymptote, we'll look at the denominator and we'll pick the highest power that appears and we'll divide each term. So I'll take f of x and I'm going to divide each of the terms by x. Here we'll divide x squared by x, 1 over x, and x divided by x, 
and negative 2 over x. Notice here that the x squared will reduce with the x, leaving us 1x on the top and none on the bottom. Here the x and the x divide out. And so we have, to find our horizontal asymptotes, we're going to look at the highest power, and that's x squared. We're going to divide each of the terms by the x squared. So we'll divide x squared by x squared, 1 over x squared, x over x squared, and negative 2 over x squared. Notice that the x squared and the x squared will divide out, and the x will cancel out with just one x squared term here, leaving us just 1 over x. This simplifies to 1, because x squared over x squared is 1, and x divided by x squared is 1 over x, and negative 2 over x squared is just negative 2 over x squared. As we look at our values, 1 over x squared goes to 0 as x squared goes to infinity. This goes to 0 as x gets really big, and similarly here, 2 over x squared goes to 0 as x gets really, really big. So we, now we have this expression is equivalent to 1 over 0, which is undefined. That means there is no horizontal asymptote. There is no horizontal asymptote. Since the degree of the numerator is one more than the denominator, we know there's going to be a slant asymptote.